Good morning, everyone. It's good to see you. And it's good to have another opportunity to find myself. Because in this life, it is about finding self. And it is that struggle that keeps us from becoming who it is we're trying to be. See, life is a pattern of ways to show us of who we are. But a lot of times, because in that struggle, we fall, or we don't get it the first time around, so therefore we think that it's not possible or that we shouldn't be involved in this thing that we're pursuing. And so a lot of us don't even pursue the goals or opportunities that are right in front of us, because we looking back at that thing that someone said that we could not, that we should not, and why you? See, these are the things that happen to all of us in our lives. And it is not recognizing that this power, this spirit that birthed all things into existence is trying to awaken something within us. See, we need to give honor and praise to the Lord. See, this Lord of the world shines on the north, south, east, and west. And it is only to activate a new foundation, a new peace, a new love, joy, and happiness through each and every one of us. Because we are representing this power. And when we don't see ourselves as, then we can't be. It is only when we look at the faults of ourselves that we don't emerge as the power that we are. See, only hesitation can stop us from being perfect. See, we say God is perfect and those in him is saying that we were built on a foundation of truth. But what we do is we get swayed away from pain, Misfortune, mishaps. So Reverend Lisa said, we need to emerge as our Christ selves. So let's look at the word emerge. We want to move out or away from something. What has happened? And then we want to come into view of who and what it is we really are. We want it to become apparent you see, are prominent in our lives. And how we do this, we have to build a connection with spirit. Spirit is already waiting. See, spirit produced it. Now it's up to us to sit and listen to activate that power that is within us. See, when spirit says move and we hesitate, then we can't and we won't and we never will because we're not trusting in the foundation of the Lord. See, when we trust in this foundation, it will activate our God power, and we will emerge as our Christ self. See, as the Egyptians wandered in the desert to their freedom, so do we have to emerge from our tragedies to our destiny. Not only the knowledge, not only will the knowledge keep us safe from harm, but it will open our mind's eye to see through the haze, the confusion that is possessing us due to our inhibitions from our past decisions and experiences. See, clarity comes when we awaken from our stubbornness our rebelliousness, and realize that God is on our side. See, and, and, this, and that God has prepared a table for us in the presence of our enemies. We are all familiar with the prayer, and nothing can stop us but our thinking negatively about who we are 
and the power we possess. We are all living in the past and are limiting our own growth because we won't let go. If we need a prayer, seek a prayer. If we need a psychiatrist, seek a psychiatrist. If we need a practitioner, seek a practitioner. Whatever it is that we need to enhance us, to help us emerge from the difficulties, our challenges in our lives, we need to seek it. Not worry in the misery or the frustration that it hasn't been or it has not came to be because that thinking stymates us. It holds us back. It doesn't allow us to move forward. Whatever we need to move our blinders, we should seek it until we emerge as our Christ self. See, in Exodus, you know, um, as the people were journeying, the Egyptians were journeying out uh, from Egypt, you know, they came to this spot in life where they didn't understand why they went to this road and they went to this road, they went to this road. And all these wayward ways that they went, they did not connect with what it was that they were seeking to the freedom that they were promised. And so they were upset or disappointed in Moses. See, Moses went away to seek the knowledge or the law from God so that we could, he could hear and reveal the power to the people so that we can walk in peace and achieve the things that we're looking for. But see, the book says, God has said to them, man, I've seen these people. They are stiff-necked and hard-hearted and rebellious. See, we got to see ourselves in this book. See, we don't see ourselves, we think, oh, that's the way it is, we don't even get it. Or, so we can't, we, we don't see our way out because we don't say, you know what, how do I fit in that story? What does this story mean for me? See, what the Bible is saying is that we are proud, stubborn, and unwilling to follow the lead of someone. In this case, it was Moses. So Moses is up there with God talking, trying to get the law so he can bring it back. And then the people say, man, he brought us out here to die. <laughs> man, what's, why is this going on? Why, what's taking him so long? We've been here, we hungry, we trying to do. And so all this complaining, then they went to Aaron, they was like, man, you got to make us something. And this is what we do, we trying to change the atmosphere. So Aaron said, okay, well, y'all bring me your gold earrings from your wives, your kids, and we can make us a molten calf. See, and that's what we do. We follow the thing that is not going to bring us to our purpose, but momentary satisfaction. See, Moses, Moses when he brought him out of Egypt, it was, it was like, I'm trying to teach you something. And they wasn't ready, right? And that's how we are. It's just that we're not ready. We, we be right up there at our goal. And then a setback happened. And then because of the setback, man, this is, this, this is hard, man. I didn't know it was going to take all that. It's got to take you to learn so that you can see who you are. It is, this is how we become. We have to be purified and understand that when we look up and we speak up and out, it's going to pull us to where it is we're trying to go. Looking back and looking down is not going to bring us, there's no power. There's no power in it. 
even if you ain't 100%, if you 80, 85, you can accomplish something. And that's all we're trying to do. All of us have lived and worked in some type of experience, whether it was good or bad, but we knew that we had to work. I remember my father used to say, whatever job you get, they may not explain everything to you. They may not explain this stuff to you, but you better be prepared to do everything that come along with it. You've got to be prepared and know that it's within you to do it. We are the ones who are going to do it. You look at the government. Who did the government? The people are doing it. It's up to us. And if we don't like it, get involved. You can't change from the outside. You change from the inside. And that's how it is with spirit. We got to change from the inside. It is where we will find who we are. See, Moses going up to the mountain to receive God's wisdom, which is the divine law, signifies the state of mind one must have to attain the inspiration from spirit. See, everyone who desires to grasp their spiritual instruction must make his or her journey in solitude to hear their instructions. Hold on. Whenever you're going for something, in order to hear what it is you must do, and you must do like they said in the old church, go into the closet. It's a separation from the outer confusion that we're up against. See, because when we're looking at the outer confusion, we're judging and seeing that with our eyes. But it's not our eyes that is leading us. It is our mind. It is that third eye that's behind the scene that is connected with spirit. And so when we go in solitude, we can go deeper. We can hear the echoing voices that are speaking to us, to telling us to go forward, to go on. And when we don't go in the silence, we're seeing the confusion, the disappointment, all this chaos that is going on around us. This is, all, this is what we're looking at. So when we look at the news, we're saying, oh, how chaotic it is. We don't say, right where they are, the peace that is required, the healing that is required, the love that is necessary is surrounding this place. And whatever is going on is going to be renewed and restored. We don't do that. We look at it and we go, man, look at that. That water's coming down our heart. We don't need no more rain. What? And then we complain when we get rain, and we need it. It's, it's, it's baffling, but this is how we have to see what we're doing to ourselves in life. We're restricting the very thing we need from ourselves. That's what that mindset does. That's, all the, that's the confusion that we have. That, Oh, I'm, I, I'm just thankful that I'm hearing it and that I heard it because it's awakening me and helping me to see it. And this is, you know, because it's as we look back and look over, you know, we all have those moments where we didn't do because. But as we begin to connect with those ideas, we know that we can make it despite of, right? It's like... Just because I can't run five miles anymore don't mean I can't run. But this is what we do to ourselves. We say, I can't and I shouldn't. This ain't right. But that's putting ourselves back into a setback. And I'm not telling no one to run. That's not what I'm saying. <laughs> what I'm saying is you walk to your mailbox and you walk back. And if you got to walk around the corner, or like they told me after my surgery, walk one house until you can do two. And when you can do two, do three. And not until, don't force it, don't put no pressure on yourself to get there. Just do it. Because that's when we get there. 
But let us recognize that we do not have to leave our current location. We just need to be still. See, right where we are, and all we must do is go there in mind. It is in our prayer, meditation, and affirmations that we connect with the power and presence of the good that is waiting on our recognition of it. Our recognition of the omnipotent power is necessary and vital for the mental discipline we need to emerge as our Christ self. Once we accept God as our life source and not the material things, we possess are things we worship because they bring momentary satisfaction. We can emerge from our past setbacks, frustrations, and difficulties as we release those things, those worries. See, when we focus on the material, that means we're putting it ahead of the spiritual. That's why I said seek it first. See, not that you won't, it's just saying no how to appreciate the thing that you're pursuing and the power that you're using and you possess to achieve it. See, we got to know who we are. And that is how we get there. See, because then we won't be distracted because trouble's going to come. Trouble is always around the corner. Not See, that, that's why when the book it says the world is evil it's not saying you can't overcome it it's just saying there's some things you're going to go through that you got to be prepared for how do you prepare for it in mind seek knowledge knowledge wisdom and understanding will provide what it is that we need to overcome see when we disconnect from spirit in mind is when we find ourselves in challenging situations. And then our ego begins to negotiate <laughs> or speak on our, on our behalf to separate us from God. See, that's where the conflict rises. It's in that stuff that we know. But be still. Be still, my child, and know that I am with you always. It don't matter what they say. It don't matter how it's said. Forget all that. But it's the way you said it. Forget all that. <laughs> Speak to yourself. Let me hear what it is that they are saying that I need to know. Not how it makes me feel. What do I need to hear from this? Because it is what, how I hear it is how I interpret it. And if I interpret it the wrong way, I'm going to take it the wrong way and I'm going to say the wrong thing. <laughs> this is what we do. This is, this is all the book. See, this is, this is why I like this teaching. Because it teaches you how to confront your life. Not that wait and wish and win. Yeah, win when I achieve the power that I'm looking for right in front of me. Amen. That's when I'll have it and not set myself back because of my frustrations. See, just like the children of Israel, when Moses was gone a long time, in their minds, he was gone a long time. They accused him of abandoning them. This is what the meaning is when we accuse somebody of something. The lie becomes the truth. We convince ourselves. See, that's what we do because we want to feel a certain kind of way. We don't even hear the truth of it because we're not using our God mind to hear them. We're using judgment. We have to learn that, go within, hear what is necessary and what is right, not the confusion. See, our mistrust has taken over and it does not seek solutions, 
but finds faults. And then when we are in our minds, we surrender to doubt, confusion, and misinformation. When we don't understand, we're supposed to pause and breathe to hear the voice emerging from within to guide us to our Christ self. In, 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 uh, in the Metaphysical Dictionary, Fillmore explains the making of the golden calf this way. He says, the ears represent the obedience and receptivity of the mind. And the giving to Aaron of the jewels of the ears means that the ideals were poured out upon the intellect. See, so go back to what I was saying. If we thinking about this is right, we ain't using spirit, we using our outside, we, it's, it's confusion. And the intellect concentrated them into a state of consciousness of the natural calf plane. That's why they built the calf, uh, the golden calf, because that's something they can see, they can believe in that. See, it's, we take that as true but not the power that is behind us that is asking us to change, asking us to become more, asking us to emerge from this confusion, this past. See, this is idol worship and, and results in the materialization of the whole body. This is why we go, <laughs> because now we believe it. <laughs> so we just go, right? It, and, and we have to overcome that. When the intellect is the center of consciousness and all the jewels of the mind are poured into it, many golden calves. So what it's saying is things, we begin to make things bigger than what they are. Right? Our material structures, then we go, to, oh, well, I shouldn't because, you know, Cousin Betty tried and she didn't do it. And so, you know, and, you know, we didn't come from a family who wrote real well, so I shouldn't expect myself to write real good, you know. And um, why am I doing this when nobody ever done it before? Well, why not? <laughs> you may be the one to encourage, inspire someone to achieve and do it. And just because you don't write a 500-page book don't mean your 10-page book ain't good. That's in our own minds. See, we stymied our own growth just by our, the confusion that's built up, and we worship it. See, this is referring to whatever material thing we might worship that takes our mind away from our principal guide, which is spirit that requests us to love the brotherhood, respect God, and become a diligent seeker of knowledge to improve self. And it don't matter how long it takes you to get there, but keep working on it. You know, like, you know, sometimes, you know, we, uh, speak for myself. <laughs> when I was in these lecture classes in school, you know, when I was younger, <laughs> You know, sometimes you go to these lectures and you're like, well, 45 minutes, do I got to go this day and that day? Like, can I, like, go the last 15 minutes and catch? <laughs> See, another way that we think within ourselves that don't allow us to hear the full instructions of what it is we need to do. See, because I was tired from whatever, but it's no excuse, no reason when you're trying to improve self. When you're trying to improve self, you got to go. You may can't walk, you need to roll, you need to find somebody. <laughs> <laughs> this is what we got to do because that's where the happiness is. That's where the power is. The power and the happiness that we seek and the joy, the peace and the love is in going, is in giving up ourselves to find it. See, God is our supplier and provider and is sufficient. And if we are willing to obey his laws, the way will be shown. And all our plans will be worked out the way and will bless us. And material things will come to us as a servant instead of a master. Yes, 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 yes. See, it's not in how many things we can accumulate. 
because we can accumulate things and they don't have to have no value. And I ain't talking about no one. I'm just saying sometimes we collect way more than what we need to do. And I, if you're a collector, that's fine. But you got to remember the more you collect, the more you got to keep up. You got to make sure you take because that clutter, and this is, this is a metaphor, right? The, the clutterness has us scattered or disoriented about what to do about what we have. We just got to see a way through. This message is a call to awaken us to emerge as our Christ self and no longer live from past regrets, haste, or fear. We should begin to look at our thoughts and monitor them and make adjustments to expand our views to see the power of God working in our lives daily. See it. Say it, believe it, until we emerge as our Christ self. In Ephesians, the book does a rallying call. And it goes like this, Ephesians 5, 10 and 16, for those who want to write it down. Wake up, sleeper. Rise from the dead. And Christ will shine on you. Be very careful how you live. Not as unwise, but as wise. Making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. Not evil as a bad because it's going to be confusion. There's going to be things. That's why we got to be prepared. Today is a wake up call to all Christians everywhere. That's a call to emerge, to move forward. And is it not written that ye are gods? Psalms 82 and six, it's in the book. This implies that there's a powerful potential inside of us. And then Isaiah comes along and goes, wake up. Wake up, pull on your boots, Zion. Dress up your Sunday best, Jerusalem, holy city. This is a call to us. Recognize who we are. That's all it's saying. Those who want no part of God have been called out. What that means is it's being removed because we're disconnected from the understanding and so therefore we're weak and we give up and we fall astray. When we don't make it, that's what we've done. Doesn't mean that we can't, doesn't mean it ain't impossible. It means that we gave up and they won't be coming alone. <laughs> when you give up, you ain't coming. Brush off the dust and get to your feet, captive Jerusalem. Throw off your chains, captive daughter of Zion. God says you were sold for nothing. You're being bought back for nothing. See, it ain't nothing. It's just what we think about it. We have to go get it. The doubt is what's holding us back. The lack of confidence is what's holding us back. It ain't the power we have. The power is waiting on us to use it. And if we don't represent the power right, shame on us. We can't be mad. Oh, I knew it wasn't no God. I knew God didn't exist. <laughs> but you ain't used it or tried it. Or you give up before you can connect to the source and understand how it works and operates in you. So we don't need to see outside of ourselves. We have to see within. And so 1 Timothy goes on and comes. He says, get the word out. Teach all these things and don't let anyone put you down because you're young. Teach believers with your life by word, by demeanor, by love, by faith, by integrity. Stay at your post. 
reading scripture, excuse me, giving counsel, teaching, and that special gift of ministry you were given when the leaders of the church laid hands on you and prayed, keep that dusted off in your use. Cultivate these things. Immerse yourself in them. The people will all see you mature right before their eyes. Keep a firm grasp on both your character and your teaching. Don't be diverted. Just keep at it. Both you and those who hear you will experience salvation. That's 1 Timothy, 1 Timothy 4 and 11 through 16 for those who want to write it down. That's one to follow up on. I, I got to follow up on that. <laughs> because it reminds me of, you know, when, when I was in a traditional church, it was never really broken down to teach it to you where you could utilize it. It was more about fear God. You know, and then what I learned in the, my human experience is that if I fear something, I'm not trusting it. I'm afraid of it. I'm not going to go. But as I begin to study, I realize that it's not fear, it's respect, homage, obeisance. See, but if you don't get that clarification when you're young, when you seven, eight, nine, because we hearing this stuff. Like our parents take us to church, we hearing this stuff. And even though we can't recite nothing to you, right, when you would pull us to the side, what did you learn today? Did you hear? What was... But we grasp it because we heard it. It's information that's stored in our subconscious. And so we are being empowered even though you may think we're not listening. And so my point is, because it wasn't really explained to me, I was more condemned because of what I was pursuing and not being taught what I needed to know to evolve. And that's life, and we have to recognize that wherever we are. See, we all going through that somewhere. We facing the same confusion I'm talking about. That's just how it is, but we gotta know who we are so that we can come out unscathed, not burnt up, but you know, just a little, little scab or something, you know. Scabs heal. Let us emerge as our Christ self, no matter what may come. Let us trust in the word that has been shared and put our faith to work and allow the spirit to use us as his vicegerent on earth to return to Jerusalem, which means the city of peace. In 2 Chronicles, if my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn, and I ain't going to use what it says in the Bible, it says wicked. I'm going to say worried ways. See, we're going to turn from these worried ways that we've learned, that we have these blocks. Then will I hear from heaven and he will forgive not our sins, but our mistakes and heal our land. See, it's, it's been as old as this book is, nothing has changed. It's all the same. But it's in the understanding of the mind that we are opening up trying to find it. And it is in that lack of knowledge that we're unable to grasp and fulfill the promise that we put on ourselves. See, spirit only reveals to us through our personality who we are and what we're capable of. And it's up to us to pursue it in a manner with pride and dignity and fortitude and grace. See, it's, it's, that's it. And don't forget about loving the brotherhood in respect. In closing, let us remember that we're to lay down our lives to Christ. Not die, but live. The dying represents 
releasing the ways we have been disobedient, harming ourselves, and using our physical eyes to make decisions. We have to lay our burdens down and bring them to the altar and take his yoke upon us because it's been referenced that is light. Let us no longer form images after patterns that we see with the eye. Instead, form ideas that arise in the silent meditation of our mind. That's it. Let us affirm within our mind that we have it. That's it. No, it's become who you want to be by empowering yourself with the power of spirit that is waiting on our recognition of it. So let us affirm I let go of the past, I let go of the past. And, I the and I awaken to the present and I realize, and I realize that, I am led that I am led and guided by the divine spirit, and by the divine spirit within, me. within me and so it is. And so it is.